we are at the St. Louis Arch. We are at the St. Louis. Welcome and, to and Wandering Wanda. We know Ed and Janice. Say hi. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Walter. Today we are at what is officially called the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, commonly known as the St. Louis Arch. Made up of the Gateway Arch, the Museum of Westward Expansion, and the Old Courthouse, this breathtaking national park stands in tribute to Thomas Jefferson, who was our third president the man whose dream inspired the westward spread of freedom and democracy. Here, here's part of the group. We're all waiting. <laughs> yeah, we, I can film because everyone, I don't know who anyone is right now. So I'm not capturing anyone's soul. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Yeah. To go first. I'll go first. Missouri or Mississippi River? Mississippi. Missouri's upriver by us. We're right beside them. Okay, this is this is our cruise with everyone wearing a mask, so we, no one knows what we look like. <laughs> Good. Okay, good. Doors are now closing. Doors are now closing. We'll be on the ground floor. It's a lot faster going down. Oh my goodness. Well, what 
get it faster, they said. Three minutes instead of four. Yes. Why is he pointing? He's pointing at our windows. Our window? Lining us up and pointing at our windows. We're window one. Yes, am I pointing at the right window? So you have to move have until to I'm move pointing now. at the right window or move but my you finger. Got, you got it. Oh. Well, yeah, you're pointing at the right window. Oh. I gotta make her do it. Okay. <laughs> I don't see a big deal out of it. I don't, it's not a big That's deal. That's the window I was at. Okay. What window were you at? Number one. Number one. We are at number four. There's our bus that broke down. So we will be waiting for a new bus while the other bus is operating correctly. And there goes the hood. With your broken bus. of Adolphus and Lily Anheuser-Busch, built in 1921 for $250,000. Its current replacement value is $7.5 million, if you'll hold right here. All right, you guys, you guys intermix with the other bus much? Yes, no. A little bit. All right, I am hoping for a lot more out of you guys than what they gave me. All right? So I'm going to introduce you to iconography. All of the imagery within the cemetery is not random. It's all for a reason. So who's my tree huggers? Who plants a garden? All right. What kind of flowers are on my fence? Hops and grapes. Hops. Very good. Hops. He's been here before. No, no. So they are hop blossoms. They are telling you that they brew beer. But if you go up, see where Vinny Vinny Vinci is? I came, I saw, I conquered. That little point is pointing to a gnome and a squirrel. And growing on the king of beers is what? Can you guys make out that plant? Grapes. Grapes. Why are grapes growing on the king of beers? It turns out that Adolphus Bush considered beer Doss Slop. It was a great vehicle of which to make beer, but as a German born, he preferred a white chilled Riesling. All right. When this was originally constructed, it was rough-hewn, and Lily Anheuser-Busch 
Kaiser Bush saw it and said, take it apart. They took it apart, polished it, and put it back together. Red Missouri granite is very prized inside our state, but not prized outside the state. You're going to go ahead and just follow this white line for a moment. And it's going to make that right turn. What was on the, what images were on the stained glass? Uh, they're just see. different saints. Uh, we believe that the stained glass was actually harvested from a church in Germany and then brought here and recycled. Uh, because again, 1913, if you type, think about that, that is basically at the apex of World War One, and uh, there's a lot of destruction going on, and so we think that she saved it from there. Uh, you guys look on the right hand side, we're going to see another coke lot for Lucy Ames. Lucy was known as the Port Princess of St. Louis. Her husband died relatively young, and she took over the family business, raised the boys, and the boys are the ones who put this very elegant Gothic memorial in place. Uh, she also, if you're at St. Louis and Ames places in University City, and that was part of her diversification. She went outside of just doing pork and uh, did real estate. Just keep going straight down. You're, you're going to pass our friends on the coast. We can all honk it and wave at it. Uh, one of our exquisite red buds here on the right hand side. You guys missed that in spring, of course. Now, we are an sectarian. That means we have been accepting to all. So, on our grounds is every flavor of Christianity Jewish, Muslim, feng shui, believers, and non believers. Proof of that is on your left hand side. When you see the Bush name, right above it is Yiddish. That is an Orthodox Jewish burial. He is credited with two things. One is, there we go. Um, he, um, our governor, Claiborne Fox Jackson, seceded from the Union. And so Abraham Lincoln knew if we opened it up to another election that we'd go secessionist. And so Isidore Bush represents the Jewish vote in St. Louis. But he also is a vineyard. And I don't know if you know this, but through a blight, all of the vines in France were obliterated, and 75% of the revitalization in France came from Isidore Wood. All right, so keep on going. And if you'll do me a favor, we're going to do a little funky on the fence. We're still going to follow the white line, but I'm going to show them. All right, iconography. If you guys look to your left hand side, if you pull up just a little bit more. You're going to see the stand of a torch. Underneath the stand, you see the two bulbs of the hourglass. And what do you see on the sides of the hourglass? How about wings? This is Tempest Fugit. Tempest Fugit is time flies, and it is an acknowledgement that all of our lives are short and finite, and that you need to live each day to its fullest. The iconography in a cemetery is not for the dead. The dead have moved on. The iconography is for the living. And so this is to tell you to be good boys and girls. If you're not good boys and girls, you do not get to go where they have gone to. They're leaving you signposts for hopefully your adventure forward. Go ahead. Now you're going to see something a little confusing. It looks like the line goes to the left. We want to stay in the middle. Because we're doing like 20 minutes or so. The valley on your left hand side is one of our uh, little vignettes where we've not done any burials. This will ensure that we were an active cemetery for at least a couple hundred more years. So you're just going to follow that way. You'll see that it, once you do this wrap, we are not So how many beer drinkers? Uh, Alright, so we've already identified we are a beer town. Another family very important to beer in St. Louis is the Greasy Deck family. In fact, Falstaff, which they produced, was the very first beer that uh, Roosevelt drank after Prohibition was over. And the man who made that happen is on the left-hand side. His name is Papa Joe Greasy Deck. He actually bought the shield and the Falstaff name from another St. Louis family. So Papa Joe, Joseph Greasy Deck right there, this is the person who will uh, usher in that new era of beer consumption after Prohibition. Many people give it to Anheuser-Busch. That's because they had the flashy Clydesdale rig that delivered it to the front door when Papa Joe actually delivered it to the back door well ahead of Anheuser-Busch. The steps going up to some of these. I'm sorry? You have steps going up to some of these. Um, yeah, we don't want you to have to go up a steep incline, so we put stairs in for you. How nice. <laughs> Families are very, very nice. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to stop in front of my head. Alright, in 1907 the Tate Mausoleum was built and it has the single
single most important piece of iconography as far as I'm concerned. So do you guys look above the door, there's actually two Egyptian eagles. All right, see that sphere in the middle? That sphere represents your soul. Remember those Tom and Jerry cartoons when you had the angel and the devil on your shoulders? Well, those snake heads represent good and evil, which is in all of us. In Egyptian mythology, at the time of your death, your heart is removed and weighed against the weight of a feather. If your heart is full of angst and hate, it is heavier than a feather, your journey is over. But if you are light-hearted and your heart is lighter than the feather, you move on to the next realm. So again, this iconography is a reiteration of being good boys and girls. The Tates have already moved on. The iconography is not for them. The iconography is for you. Are you a good boy or a bad boy? <laughs> okay. Uh, if you'll notice the flowers, that is because this past weekend the Tate family laid a recent family member to rest. This is where it gets into, you know, a lot of people come in and ask, what's the oldest section of the cemetery? There really isn't one. Because we have these family lots. I already told you this one was built in 1907. We did our most recent burial just this last week. You'll follow the part right now. So, that the Always by the family. Down the, down the, sorry. She asked about the iconography. The iconography and everything above ground is the family's choice. The cemetery only has final approval so that nothing inappropriate comes in. All right, so I ask, who's my tree huggers? No tree huggers. Everybody's learned they don't want to play the game. Uh, Michael would have, of course, told you about this, but this is a significant enough tree starting to come into view on your left-hand side. Many of you have never seen one this big. This is our American elm tree. It takes three adults. Can I go down to that one tree? The marker. It takes three adults to get their arms around this tree, which we put somewhere between 250 to 300 you look up and through, you'll see it has this wonderful spread, and you can see how large it is. If you also look, you'll see there's boreholes in its roots. Every other year, we have to give this an inoculation to keep Dutch elm disease away. 250 holes, 500 gallons of a naturally occurring fungicide brought in on a low humidity day so that the wow. tree wicks it up on its own. That one inoculation, $10,000. Subsidized by the family at Shades, this is James S. McDonald of McDonald Douglas Corporation, which is, of course, Boeing in St. Louis now. But if you really want to know what this man did, every Gemini capsule and every Mercury capsule that went up was produced here in St. Louis by McDonald Douglas. If you guys look to the right-hand side at the bullet lot, I don't know if Michael told you, but most of the stones you're looking at are not tombstones. They are footstones. And that is because uh, that's because the uh, Victorians heavily planted on their graves woody and ivy on male graves, flowering plant material on feminine. And if you did that with a tombstone, your vegetation blocks the text. So that's why they are using the predominance of the footstone. So as you look through our cemetery, these folks are not buried with their feet underneath the road. Those are footstones. They're on the other side. One of the most photographed spots in the cemetery is what's known as the girl in the glass box. It is a seven foot tall Carrera marble statue for Herman Ludes. The next two people we're gonna talk about are homeopathic, are pharmaceutical, which was very important here in St. Louis. Ludes homeopathic still exists if you Google it. It's not owned by the Ludes family. You'll see it's a big statue. Uh, so Herman was 28 years old when he went to Genoa, Italy and saw a winged angel. And he decided he wanted a statue like this, but he wasn't very religious, so he asked an art student to create one that was not winged. And so we have this.
we are at Arrow Rock State Park and we this is one of the reasons why we don't stay at state or national parks because it's been raining all day and it's really muddy not the park's fault because we only have 30 amps no water no sewer 30 amps Thank goodness it's a nice cool day right now. So even though the circle itself is paved, the side itself is semi-paved with lots of ruts. <laughs> We're at site 14 and here's the rest of the RVs. So some have backed up and very very unleveled not good for a a class over here there it's a pull through but it's a loop it's a loop pull through and apparently there are 50 amps on the other side where we're not we're still at 30 amps so everyone in this loop is a 30 amp and right now it's just a nice day we're gonna close the screen door before bugs get in oh we did have to level See, we did have to level two blocks in order to level left and right. We're wearing flip flops. Walter's wearing flip flops. And I'm wearing shoes. Took off my shoes because I. I'm wearing zapatos and Walter's wearing chinelas. So there is a um, a fifth wheel. Didn't Number know there was four. a fifth wheel. I got to pay for it. Bring me a receipt. So number four is a fifth wheel. <laughs> okay, I'm enjoying this right now. It's nice and green. And it smells wonderful. Oh, here's another pull through. It's kind of like the one in Vamp. Vamp? Where you drive through. Hello. This is adorable. California. Oh, is this one of the Big Bear people? Oh, it's Ontario, though. Santos County. Yeah, he was the fire, retired firefighter. Oh. They do have a dump station here at Arrow Rock State Park and the fresh water, we do have fresh water also but you'll need your own hose. Looks like a, it looks pretty clean. The dump station and there's trash over there. 
there's two loops where we're at is 30 amp no water no no sewer and it's starting to sprinkle <laughs> and these are apparently the 50 amp sites I'm not really sure it looks 30 to me Apparently some of them are not level. These bases are not made for the big coaches. We have one in our caravan that had to use massive blocks in order to get level so they can get their slides out. Okay, it's sprinkling. We're going back. <laughs> The building looks really old. Arrow Rock. We're on High Street. No, well, it's higher than Low Street. The, the houses have names. Have you noticed that? Uh, yeah. Good thing we can't do the walking tour. All down the hill. Oh, I would have been, yeah. There's a couple of them that would have been. <laughs> look at this one. Oh, look at that. They're all different. They have an upstairs on the porch. Yeah. Oh, they have an upstairs on the porch. Like yeah. mm -hmm. the you can pass down beads. I have a hitching me. post right there. That's a hitching post. Oh, look at that. <laughs> is that what that is? That's it looks like is. a wheel. Yeah, that's a hitching post. See? You didn't know I was a professional tour guide. No. Well, now we you knew got that. Powder, shoot. That's the tram where the tram starts. Is that store open? There, there's the fabric store. Where? Right there. Oh, it's <laughs> it says fabrics. Doesn't it say fabrics? Quilting. Handcrafted items, quilted, floral, canned and baked goods. Quilting. We sold our one item today. Come They're closed. <laughs> Look at the rocks in that bag. Where, where's his wife? <laughs> Miller Bradford House. I don't mean to historic house. 